right, so today uh, we're looking at this profile lookup again, and uh, I just started fresh to give it a stab again. And uh, there's four of us on the call today. We're just going to pair program through this and uh, uh, just try to get to a uh, deeper understanding of what's going on here. All right, so the first thing. I'll just read this real quick again. We have an array of objects representing different people in our context, a lookup profile function that takes name and a property called prop as arguments have been pre-written for you. The function should check if name is an actual context first name and the given property prop is a property of that contact. Okay, yeah, so if name is an actual context and first name and the given property is a property of that value of that contact if both are true then return the value of that property if name does not correspond to any context then return no, no such contact if prop does not can correspond with to any valid properties of a contact found to match name, then return no such property. Okay. Okay, so it's gonna return the value of prop, and it's going to say no such contact. Those are the steps. And my computer's freezing up. And okay, that's fine. Now you are. Uh, and why is my computer freezing up? I typed this like thirty seconds ago. It's not bad enough. Say. Now, write a for loop first. To okay, for okay, so this is where we just create an i bar i equals zero. And then uh, we should make this the length of yeah the length of that length of the array. array. What's the name of the array? Contacts. Yeah. I less than <laughs> contacts dot length. Yeah. And hold on, I've got a munchkin is joining me. Okay. All right. Contacts at length and then I plus plus. Okay, hold on. Can you sit here beside me? If if it's gonna be this first if or no, yeah, no we should check for the name first. Yeah, the name. Okay. 
Okay, so if mm, contacts, 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 um, I. contacts, I, yeah, and then I just say contacts. first name, yeah, first name, first name. I think use the dot because here first name is there directly hard coding that value because it's not coming from the function card. Okay. Directly first it's name equal is equal to, to name. Name. Um, I don't do that enough. Sorry. Let's see what else. Okay. All right. Name. Then and and the no. given prop has a property. Yeah, and no, no, just uh, open the if condition and write the nested if for next condition. Okay. Uh, if use the curly braces. Open the curly braces for first if. Oh uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, if. if. Uh, Contacts i that has one property. Yeah. That has a property. I type this, it's just one slot. Okay. All right. Then I should say prop. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. Prop. And then okay. yeah, open the text condition and return the value of prop. Okay. Return. Um, Contacts. I. I. And uh, square bracket prop. The prop is variable here, so we should place it in square brackets. Because okay. the prop is coming from the function parameters. Okay. So how do I understand what like yeah. when when we needed to use the dot and then yeah. and part of yeah. the object it okay. needs to be a dot notation. Yeah. Yeah. But then when it's part of the function parameters. Function you see parameters. That, yeah, line 30, you can see that name and prop are the parameters there. Yeah. Okay. Inside the function, name and prop. So we can treat them as variable. Okay. That will be replaced by that uh, function invocation from the last line we are calling that function. So that values will be replaced with prop. Okay. Okay. You can see that if you scroll down there is, in the function call, we'll pass some values. So, that square bracket prop will be replaced with that passed value here. I, I uh, think yeah, in the last return you, will uh, use yeah, you should scroll down a bit more. There is a function call at the end. Yeah, here yeah. the prop will be replaced with likes, and the name will be replaced with Akira. This Akira and likes are part of yeah. that object. I see. Here yeah. we are passing that property names dynamically. There we are using directly the yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Hold on, I need my hands, baby. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's working at least for the first part. Uh, for the nested if, open the else and at this point, uh, 37, line 37, after here, yeah, else, else if, no if, just else only, because okay. yeah. in that else return, no such property, if the property has own property, return value, if there is no property, return no such property, no, right, return straight. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, are done. Okay, I don't know. I need to write this. 
written the capital N. N is caps. Yeah, you're right. Okay. All right. Hold on. Let's get a. And outside of for loop return no such content. Outside for at 43. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so 45. Uh, uh, now write 45 at 45 return. Okay. At 47, I think. Oh, that far outside now. for loop. Yeah. Wow. Outside of the for loop. It has to be completely out. At 47? Oh, no. Yeah, outside the for loop. Wow. It's just completely out. No such content. Switch. Okay. So if I change this to Jamal. Yeah, just change that into something. No such content. And then if I say Akira and um, what do I say? Just change the likes to like us and misspell it. That's it. It will. Yeah. Like. No such property. All right. Boom. All right. Yeah, I still just got to get to a point where I can do this by myself. Yeah, even I struggle to do this on myself. I just take the I'm solution. I'm not quite part. there yet. Um, yeah. Hey, one second. I got okay. My uh, daughter just spilled stuff. I got to clean it up. All right, that one's done. Yeah, I don't understand it all the way, but I'm done. Yeah, we can figure out that. The confusing part is placing that return outside that for loop. Yeah. Last return. And from now here, these are easy challenges we can wrap it up today. All right, generate random fractions with JavaScript. Random numbers are useful for creating random behavior. JavaScript has a math that random method or, or function that uh, generates a random decimal number between zero inclusive and not equipped up not ca not quite up to one exclusive thus math.random can generate a zero but never quite return a, a one note like storing values with the equal operator I guess IUL may have to go. Okay. That's fine. Uh, all function calls will be resolved before the return executes. So we can return the value of the math.random function. Okay, so change random fraction to return a random number instead of returning zero. Okay. In JavaScript, we have one math object. In that math object, we have many methods to do some mathematical operations. Okay. Uh, this random is one method from that math object. Yeah. Uh, just in place, in the return statement, right? Math dot random. That's it. Hold on. Zero. situated so I guess I'm not trying to waste time uh, okay 
All right, so let's take a look. Okay. So zero. Uh, just for, before doing that, just log dot console dot log another random somewhere anywhere in the code. Okay. So, uh, console dot log. Math dot. Yeah, M is cap. Cap yeah. Because it's a, random. It's a object. That is a inbuilt uh, in object the of the JavaScript engine. Random. Yeah, my computer's running slowly. Yeah. yeah, it's a better. Okay. Yeah, you can see that number in console. That's. Yeah, between zero, zero and one. one. But it never returns one. I think it returns up to. 0 0.99 but it never returns one but it will return zero that's why the increase one exclusive they mentioned okay yeah that's the challenge uh, that's pretty simple they just want you to work with it okay hold on sorry Okay. All right. Generate random whole numbers with JavaScript. Let me turn this down. Uh, okay. It's great that we can generate random decimal numbers, but it's even more useful if we use it to generate uh, random whole numbers. Use math.random to generate a random decimal. Multiply that random decimal by 20. Use another function, math.floor, to round the number down to its nearest whole number. Okay. Okay. Remember that math.random can never quite return a 1, and because we're rounding down. It's po impossible to actually get 20. This technique will give us a whole number between 0 and 19. Putting everything together, this is what our code looks like. Math.floor, math.random times 20. We're calling math.random, multiplying the result by 20, and passing the value to math.floor function to round the value down to the nearest whole number. Use the technique to generate and return math ran, uh, return a random whole number between zero and 10. Okay, all right, so we need to do math.floor. No, outside man. Come, come to the, you're right, math.random, we should place that math.random, math.floor, so right? And yeah, I mean, that. I'll, I'll get there like this. No, no, no. You're, the math, you're missing the math before the random. Clear that? Yeah, I just added it there. Just check the line on your on instructions, the green line, math.floor, math.random. Times 20. Math.floor is a method and math.random is a method. Yeah, didn't I just add that there? Yeah, okay, yeah. And now it's looking good. Yeah, I just need to multiply it by 10 and then close it. Yeah. And then it works. I just went about it a different way. Now you can take into some variable and we can. Yeah. Take the matter random into some variable. Uh, or I'll just log the code. Copy that entire code and log it somewhere. Yeah, I need to call the function. That's what it is, right? I think they mentioned. Okay, let's call. Hold that. No. No, no need to call. Yeah, just place that function call in console. Yeah. Nine, okay. Every time we call, it will generate some random name. This time we got nine. Yeah. So that one works. All 
right. It's always rounding down, so it would never be 10 yeah. in that situation. Okay, generate random whole numbers within a range. Instead of generating a random number between zero and a given number, like we did before, we can generate a random number that falls within a range of two specific numbers. To do this, we'll define a minimum number as min and a maximum number as max. Here's the formula we'll use. Take a moment to read it and try to understand what the code, this code is doing. All right, so it's gonna round down and generate a random number that is the max minus the min plus the one. Okay, so max minus the min one so let's say this is 10 minus 5 that would be 6 and then plus the min so that would be 5 so it would be 11 yeah so then it would bring it would bring us numbers between 5 and 10 because uh, it would give us a number is that right? Yeah. Yes. Let's just give it a shot. Yeah. 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 All right. Create a function called random range that takes a range, my min and my max, and returns a random number that's greater than or equal to my min and is less than or equal to my max inclusive. All right, so all right, so math dot floor and then math dot random and then I'm going to do my max. Yeah. Minus my min plus one. Yeah, plus one. And then Stop here and we will read the formula, then we will add the plus min after that. Just imagine that 5 and 15 are two values. So 15 minus 5, 10 plus 1, 11. So we get the value between 0 to 11 here at line 13. And we are adding plus five to that value, the result. I random. Uh, Not working. Yeah, why isn't console lagging? That's crazy. Okay. Uh, Is it not supposed to come to log? It should support that. Mm, let's change this number six. 16. It's not returning anything. Uh, interesting. No, just calculate that one. We have I think it, it wants me to finish this. Yeah. My man. And then it'll work. Without the it works, but it will return value between. Yeah, I mean, we, I know it does, but I don't know. Sometimes this thing is funny. Console, no, try that console dot log. It's okay, my random. Let me just put this in there. It's still not doing it. Um, I'm just going to pass test. 
it's not a function. Floor in the heart. Uh, <laughs> I can consult at random. Here yeah. Here. <laughs> <laughs> it's always something that stupid. It's just like one letter or, you know, it's just one character always. <laughs> Uh, you just got to laugh at yourself, you know. All right. Use the parse int function. Okay. I've been wanting to learn how to use this one. Yeah. It's a I've simple heard, one. Right I've heard this one's very useful, though. Yeah. The parse int function parses a string and returns an integer. Here's an example. Var a equals parse int. 007. The above function converts the string 007 to an integer. If the first character of the string can't be converted into a number, then it returns an AN, not a number. Not a number. Yeah. Use parse int in the convert to integer function so it converts the input string as str into an integer and returns it. Just return me. Uh, Write a return statement in function. Return uh, parse int. And then use a functional parameter. Uh, the parameter oh, yeah. And then just log the value in the line type. That's it. coming. I added it. Uh, sometime tomorrow. Okay, hold on, let me try it again. Okay, there we go. All right, and then let me add some zeros. Yeah, it still does it. Just add some alphabet before the first zero. Some A R V something. The first value of the square. Um A B. Yeah, so saying that number. Add that A B at the end of that five after the five. Zero zero six five. Just add up five. Add some character. Yeah. It still it does. Replace that number. Up to that number and it goes that character. Yeah, and then if I put a one here, it's gonna do the whole number. So it's basically trimming. Yeah. If, if, if that it, integer from the string. If it's if got it. uh, a string that's got only numbers. Yeah. It's trimming the zeros and turning, it's converting it to a number. If it start with the number and even if it has some characters at the end, still it extracts that number part. Okay. And in the same way, passing, we have one more method pass float or decimal values. Okay, use the parse int function with uh, a radix. What is a radix? You know this number system binary, hexadecimal, decimal. Mm -hmm. There are some number system is there. For every number system, there is some base or radix. We call that. For binary, it is 10. Sorry, for binary it is two. For a decimal number system, the radix is ten. For a decimal, radix is sixteen. So just read that you'll understand that. All right. The parse int function parses a string and returns an integer. It takes a second argument for the radix, 
which specifies the base of the number in their string. The radix can be an integer between 2 and 36. The function call looks like parse int string comma radix. And here's an example. Var a equals parse int string 11 comma 2. Means here 11 is binary. It is is a binary number because they are passing okay. radix to. Yeah, the ver the radix variable says that 11 is in the binary system or base 2. This example converts the string 11 to an integer 3. Use parse int in the convert to integer function. So it converts a binary number to an integer and returns it. Uh, converts a binary number. Okay. Okay. Return dot. Uh, in the return uh, statement, so write that in return. Okay. Uh, up here. No, return. Yes, return. Write return. Return okay. percent. Okay, yeah, we gotta add the function percent. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't need to declare a variable here. No need. Okay. Oh yeah, because the, the parameters. The yeah. yeah, we can use the parameter. Uh, the parameter and sure. base. And two. Yeah, that's it. And then console log it. Yeah. Come on, console log. All right. The number you are passing is binary number. We are converting into some in decimal here. Passion returning the equal value of the binary. Nineteen equals to one double zero double one in binary. Okay. Okay. Use the conditional ternary operator. The conditional operator, also called the ternary operator, can be used as a one-line if-else expression. The syntax is condition uh, question mark statement if true. All right, colon, one. statement, if false. All right, so it's basically an if, if else statement all in one line, right? If it is true, the statement is true value will be written. If it is false, the statement is false value will be written. You can check that in the code example. Yeah, they've given us um, the following function uses an if else statement to check a condition uh, function find greater a or b if a is greater than b return a is greater else return b is greater this can be re rewritten using the, the conditional turn uh, conditional operator uh, one sec let me set this up. Function find greater a b return a is greater than b. Um, question mark a is greater and comma or um, uh, colon b is greater. So all right. So check if equal. Okay. So we can do this by saying return yeah, the is equal to b question mark. That and equal is assignment. Check that equality using triple. Oh yeah, because this is assignment. 
and it's like basic thing. And just just uh, wait on the boolean true and false. Right? What? Uh, true. A boolean. So it's a boolean value, no need to. Uh, so you don't even need to do anything. Yeah. Just write true. It's oh, true. Yeah. The false. The P is, I think, small. It's a JavaScript reserved word, true or true and false. These are boolean values. The P and S should be smaller. Smaller. Uh, I see what you mean. Yeah. You can see that it is turning into blue. Yeah, okay. JavaScript reserved here. So let's check. It's going to say false. Okay. Question mark, true, colon, false. That's it. All right, use multiple conditional ternary operators. In the previous challenge, you used a single conditional operator. You can also chain them together to check for multiple conditions. The following function uses if else if and else statements to check multiple conditions. All right, so it's saying yeah, is A and B equal? Then if it's not equal, is A greater than B? And then if it's not, then obviously B is greater. All right, the above function can be rewritten using multiple conditional operators. All right, so function find greater or equal a b, return a equal to b. If true, a and b are equal. Uh, if, if false, second nested. Are again, uh, uh, if it is false, we are again writing one more condition. Yeah, we've nested another one. And if that's false, then we've again nested just the return statement of B is greater. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of, I don't know. Almost for something like this, I'd almost prefer this just because it's easier to read. Yeah, easier to do. But it will. But I, yeah, I can see why. Going this way is also good. We can. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it does the same thing. Okay. Uh, use multiple condition operators in the check sign function to check if a number is positive, negative, or zero. Okay. So is the num equals zero? Equal to zero. Less than zero and greater than zero. We not check that three okay. conditions. Okay, one sec. Zero and then question mark. Uh, equal to zero. Pause. Uh, equal to zero. Yeah. Yeah. Equal to zero. Equal to zero. Yeah. And then. And um, if it is false, write again one more condition here. Uh, uh, greater than zero? Greater than zero, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, greater than zero. <coughs> Question mark, uh, proof, positive. Uh, yes. Yeah. Else, obviously it will be no. Say greater than zero. Just check that uh, coding out for what they ask. Okay, okay. after that. Uh, less than zero. Yeah. And then. Yeah, just log them. It's greater than zero. Make it into some uh, zero. Zero, and then. Uh, minus. So plus one minus values. Yeah. Less than zero. All right. And the test. 
Oh. I think we should return positive or negative zero. Make that. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. I'll just fix this. Positive. Positive. Okay. Yeah. Negative. Okay. Yeah. I think by this we will complete that job basic JavaScript. All right. Now we're on ES6. All right. Do we lose everybody along the way? Yeah, I think Nesfin is also left. Yeah. yeah. We are only two here. All right. All right, so introduction to ES6 challenges. ECMA script is a standardized version of JavaScript with the goal of unifying the language's specifications and features. As all major browsers and JavaScript runtimes follow this specification, the term ECMA script is interchangeable with the term JavaScript. Most of the challenges on FreeCodeCamp use the ES5, the specification of the language, finalized in 2009. But JavaScript is an evolving programming language as features are added and revisions are made, but new versions of the language are released for use by developers. The most recent Standardized version is called ES6, released in 2015. This new version of the language adds some powerful features that will be covered in this section of challenges, including error functions, classes, modules, promises, generators, let, and cons. Note, not all browsers support ES6 features if you use ES6 in your own projects, you may need to use a program, a transpiler, to convert your ES6 code into ES5 until browsers support ES6. That transpiler is Bubble. There is a transpiler called Bubble. We are using it in our React. We are writing JSX, right, in React? Babel, yeah, yeah. yeah. Babel. We, are J yeah. we are writing JSX, and the Babel, Converts that JSX into JavaScript in React setup. So okay. browser can understand that JavaScript. Browser can't read that JSX. We need to transpile that into JavaScript. So for that, we are using Babel that will transform our JSX into JavaScript. Okay. All right. Well, I think I think we should stop here. Yeah, I think we are only two, but it's a good stopping point there. And we'll pick up with this officially tomorrow. Yes. Finally. We got through all 107 of these bad boys. <laughs> there are 107? Yeah, 107. Oh, God. I think this must be the longest section in the entire yeah. free code camp. And once we move on to that uh, challenge algorithms, uh, scroll down to it. Mm -hmm. We have, we'll get practice of all those concepts in basic algorithm scripting and data structure. They, we will have practiced all that. Yeah. We'll get some interesting challenges here. We can test our skills using strings, arrays, all those. Okay. In the data structures, I think we work with the arrays and objects, and basic data structures. Yeah, these sections should be a lot shorter. Yeah, I think we can wrap it in two or three days, the ES6. Yeah, yeah, if we just keep the pace that we're going at. Yeah, debugging is also easy, we can complete it in one section. Yeah. Here we will play with the arrays and objects, I think, in the basic data structure. Yeah. So we can get, we get some practice using arrays. Yeah. And then intermediate 
algorithms is there and then just implement algorithm scripting. These are kind of practicing some of skills. And functional programming. Intermediate algorithms. So these are a little harder. Yeah, but like these are small projects, like just like we did it yesterday, profile lookup, but something like that. Okay. Have you completed this section? Yeah. Okay. And the last one is like projects, but still it is a writing JavaScript scripts only. It's like yeah, for palindromes. Yeah. Rem and Nimble. Caesar Cipher. I've done uh, I've done this one and this one in Python before. Okay. But nothing, nothing uh, for the other ones. But. Uh, we can do that file and object is easy, I think. We can check that in the order. The reverse order and the mm -hmm. normal order is equal, then. Yeah. The, the Redux part is a bit hard to grasp. I, it may take some 10 to 15 days, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, it's that hard? Yeah. I think we don't need to focus on Redux for now. We can. Completely, I focus on React and we try to understand React concept for now. The Redux yeah. is like a Redux is like a database. So okay. we move all the application state into Redux store. It's a store. We store our all application state in one place in Redux. So that is a bit advanced. We can learn the Redux better, then we can try that. For now, we can store our state in the components itself. Okay. But big applications, they are using Redux to maintain the state in one place. All applications state at one place. So they store the all application state in Redux and they'll use from there. Okay. So it's saying Redux to simplify yeah. the state into one place, uh, kind of like yeah. reduce, reduce the database size yeah. pretty much. All application state will be maintained at one place. So we can, all components can collect the state from that. It's like a connecting to database and pulling some data from database. Okay. I use this Redux on my Pomodoro timer. First I did it using this React and React state. Then I run the Redux and move my state into Redux store. The terminology and the, there are some concepts are difficult to understand it for beginners in the beginning. It may take time to understand this. Mm -hmm. We'll first focus on the React and after doing some one or two projects, then we'll start learning Redux. Okay. All right. If you want to give some practice to ES6, we can continue. Otherwise, we can stop it and start from tomorrow yeah let's just start tomorrow yeah I mean if anything I probably need to practice yeah, uh, can, some, go, some similar projects to like uh, um, yeah golf course either counting cards or record collection or profile lookup like I feel like for that we can do that basic algorithm second and each of those questions, I collection and profile. Yeah, those are like small kind of projects, I think, using or testing our knowledge. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I just need to struggle with more projects. Yeah, we can find such concepts in the below sections, I think, basic algorithm scripting. Just open one challenge in the basic algorithm, basic algorithm scripting. Yeah. All right. Okay. So for that, we need to set Google sets the formula for converting Celsius to Fahrenheit, and we need to convert that formula into our code here. 
there is one form formula is there to convert celsius to fahrenheit mm -hmm. you can use write a code using your formula to convert i think temperature into 9 by 5 plus 32 will returns the fahrenheit okay. value the algorithm to convert yeah. from celsius to fahrenheit is the it's temperature in Celsius times 9.9 9 divided by 5 plus 32. Celsius into 9 by 5 plus 32 will return Fahrenheit value, I think. Okay. Fahrenheit equals Celsius into... Again. Did, did they... Uh, okay, so Celsius is the input. There is a variable at Fahrenheit Celsius line too. The variable Fahrenheit already defined and sign it the Fahrenheit temperature equivalent. Okay. Yeah. We have the variable aligned to so assign that to formula to that variable. Okay. Fahrenheit equals already is there. Ah, okay. Yeah. Equals Celsius. Celsius. Nine by four times. Into nine by five. Multiply multiply by nine by five. Multiply that Celsius with a nine by five. Yes, yeah, it's, it's coming. My computer. Yeah, yeah. And and plus thirty two. Plus thirty two. Okay. We should, we should move that plus 32 outside that, I think. Do you think so? Yeah, we can search the formula also on Google to see exactly what it looks like. Uh, the, uh, once, once log that line 7 and see is it returning the right value or not. Eighty-six. Just check that our test cases and is it equal to? Does that sound right to you? When it's thirty Celsius. Ah. Uh, I mean, that we should reverse the formula. Can I just do it zero? And it will be thirty-two. I think so. Right. Yeah. But we are still getting eighty-six. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's right. Yes. Oh, it's working. Yeah. I think zero means eighty six. I think no. I think. Zero Celsius equals. Yeah, zero Celsius is uh, is uh, freeze the freezing point in Fahrenheit. Okay. Yeah, but in Fahrenheit zero equals. Yes. Uh, it would just be a negative Celsius. 32. Okay. Zero Celsius equal to 32 Fahrenheit. Yeah, I zero said, Celsius is uh, is the freezing point. It's 32. Yeah. In Fahrenheit. Yeah. Those are the same thing. But other numbers, they're not. They're not the same. Oh, they don't, there's no standard understanding other than just the formula. And now here we need to... Reverse a string. All right, so reverse the provided string. You may need to, uh, to turn the string into an array before you can reverse it. Here yeah, the they didn't provide much detail here. Remember, they are asking to read, search, ask yourself. They are not providing the details clearly. Just leaving to us to figure out the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. There is no method to reverse a string by default in JavaScript, but there is a method in array to reverse array elements. Array dot reverse method is there.
so we can split this string into characters of array and we will reverse that array and we will join that array again to string yeah there is, a, there is a method called string dot split and just write that method and console log it we'll see what's going on return last dot split uh, there is a string it is a string method just dot dot split yeah split is a method parentheses and Fast ports, uh, empty value inside ports. String. Yes, empty quotes, empty value means this quotes, single quotes or double quotes inside that parentheses. Yeah, now just log that value or the reverse string. Yeah, so once it's split out, then yeah, it's like I think it's an array. The split then, uh, returns an array of characters of that string. Mm -hmm. Now we have a method in array dot reverse, so we can reverse these elements in array. array. And again, we'll there is a method called array dot join, so we can turn that into string again. Just take that uh, string dot split into some variable and before the return. Let I think split is a reserve keyword, so change it to something. Um chaos or something. Yeah. Ah, right. Now, string split dot reverse. Yeah, it's a method. Uh, return that one. line. Return line three, and we can see that in console. Yeah, if you observe the console, mm -hmm. it's written the characters in that array. It's coming in the reverse way, right? Yeah. It is an array. Now I just need to join this. Yeah. Just take it into some other variable, and or else you can chain them here itself. Better, right? Let reverse string or a reverse array something yeah. string reverse or something yeah. in the return string reverse dot join Join J I J O I N. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. Uh, there's a little bit of a delay, so. Okay. Join with, I think, same in this uh, for that MD, MD course, just like in split. Okay. All right. By the. Every character. We are joining every character. If you provide space, it will join by words. Okay. We can practice the methods in W3 school ones. The string methods and array methods. So we can solve this. Now problem. it'll run. Yeah, I think those will be helpful. Yeah. Just once so take a look at that string methods and array methods on W3 schools. You have an idea on these things, string methods and array methods? Uh, yeah, some somewhat. I mean, yeah. Available for strings and array. You can 
yeah use them to play with these kind of challenges i mean it kind of and follows like some kind of like the sequel logic yeah with join and for this challenge you need to use that recursive function calling calling yeah. the function the I, might, i might pause it here yeah we'll stop it here i think i was having an issue with this i, I couldn't figure it out yeah with my git log what i've been wanting to do is do a, um you're trying to log the git log yeah yes no i'm trying to um uh, check your location are you in that project folder or no yeah what well, what i'm trying to do is um okay i was trying to work with the profile lookup okay and uh like i'll just uh something and i'll save it but uh when i try to just uh okay it's not test. saying that okay test and i try to sync it it gives me this permission denied public key uh in the what it saying on git log uh why so it's logging that the previous commits and Once tried from the terminal, we can use the git push. Okay. So me. You can do it from here itself also. VS Code. You can use the VS Code terminal also. Yeah, I mean uh, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. Right. You can break that one and just come out of that log message and. control c snobber control c yeah, i just typed it it's uh so taking some time okay. my computer's delayed i probably need to get a bunch of stuff off my computer or else open a new terminal just click that plus it right say yeah okay and then get status okay let's see now we can use the push okay no need to change again just use the push um so again is that how type that to command here in terminal git push or in master okay is working from here i think but why is it not working here i think after restart or something it may restore it okay okay uh, then i'll just close this okay for today i think we will stop here yeah that's probably good yeah. All right. One sec.